Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Earlier today, a buddy of mine was trying to use the Bolt visual scripting system with Steam VR so that he could build a game visually without having to dive into code. And I've never used Bolt myself, but it seemed like it's something that should be supported or should be pretty easy to set up. So I did a little bit of investigating and it realized that you can just create your own custom events for their state machines with a simple little call like this. You just need to call custom event dot trigger, give it the game object, the name, and any parameters that you have. And then it'll look something like this where we can actually add in our own custom events in the machine and then have it do something. In fact, this is very similar to what I did. Just pulling a trigger and making it log. Now, I'm gonna run you through the steps involved, but I just wanna make sure that you know that I don't do a lot of visual scripting myself as a programmer so there may be easier ways to do this that I just don't know about if there are please just drop a comment below and let people know if there's a you know a quicker simpler way to set this stuff up but I, what I came up with was again pretty easy so I don't think it's uh, too complicated should be able to follow along and recreate this and probably use this for any other type of custom stuff that you need to fire off a bolt event for so let's jump over to the project here we've got you know, clear that log out just a very basic empty scene with a directional light and to get it working the first thing I want to do is pull in a camera rig so if you've used Steam VR before the camera rig is just a built-in prefab and you probably use it a lot if not you just drop this thing in and essentially you can put on the headset and watch your controllers move around see the states of everything and it all just works you don't have to do any extra code for this and this is all using these uh, HTC Vive wands also works great with the oculus rift though so I've got this uh, camera rig set up and each camera rig has a left and a right controller on under it but they don't use the tracked controller script instead they use a tracked object script so what I like to do is add a tracked controller the Steam VR tracked controller right there and then this will give you a little bit of input right so it'll tell you whether or not things are pressed and there are some code events that you can call to um, or register for to determine the state of stuff too, or the, when they change. So here you can see when I press the trigger, that changes, or I can press the grips on the side and that changes. But I can't hook this directly into the Bolt system. In fact, let's show that. So now if we go down into adding a component, let's look for Bolt, and we want a flow machine. Oh, I've got both selected. I need to select a single one so I can view the editor. And then in the flow machine, I'm going to create a new one actually. Let's call this um, Steam Controller. We'll create a new flow machine. And the way that these flow machines work, you can set up um, inputs and outputs. Let's see, there's the flow graph. So you can set up inputs, outputs, and events and have it you know, do stuff, run code without having to actually code. So what I'm going to do though is delete these because I don't want this thing doing anything on start or on update. Instead, what I want is just a custom event. So if I just type in custom event, there we go. I can add this event in, and then I just need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this trigger pressed. And then I need to add in something for it to do. So I'll just add in a debug log. Oh, here, it's search for log. There we go, debug.log. And I want, when I pull this, trigger down or when this event fires I want it to do a log so I just take the triangle there and drag it right over here now the debug log also requires an input message so I think I can click on this and just drag it over here and it's actually just gonna pop up with the choices this thing's pretty damn smart and pretty intuitive and I just want to add a string literal and I'll put in some stuff like uh, what do I want for the message say Jason clicked the trigger Simple as that. So now when I press trigger, or when I send that event, it should uh, log this message out. Pretty simple, right? So let's go reselect these. Um, the left controller has this on it, or this, uh, this is macro, the flow macro. And I need to add it to the right one. So I'm gonna select the right one and add this Steam controller flow macro too. Now I need a way to make this trigger pressed event happen. So what I've done is create a new script and I just named it controller events. I think that's a terrible name for the class, but I'm gonna leave it for now. I'd recommend you rename it if you do the same thing. So I'm gonna add it to the right controller and then I'll go on to the left controller and I'll add it there. And I wanna open that up and just show you the code, show you how it works. So 
in this thing, we just look in the awake for our controller. So here it just does a git controller of the Steam VR track controller on this component. So that's gonna get me this object right here. So this script is getting a reference to that. And then we register for each one of these events. Now each one of these lines is just registering for a different event on the Steam VR track controller. In fact, if I select one of these and hit F12 and go to it, see it's just a public event with a clicked event handler. Clicked event handler just says it has a sender as a parameter. First parameter is a sender. Second one is a clicked event args. I don't care about either of those. I just care about whether or not the thing was pulled or not. That's it. So what I do here is just instead of registering out a full method, just do a quick little lambda with the sender and the event args here and completely throw those away. We don't do anything with them. So they're just here as variables, not, not being used at all. And then we just call custom event dot trigger. And again, remember we need to give it a game object and a method name or a event name. And here's the trigger clicked. And then we have a trigger unclicked which is going to fire off whenever our trigger unclicked event happens on the Steam VR controller. And same for gripped, ungripped, pad clicked, and pad unclicked. And that's it. So now I can just hit play. And when I pull the trigger, we should see something appear in the log. Oh, let's let it start playing. There we go. Get over to the console. And I pull the trigger. Oh, I see what I did wrong here. I named this trigger pressed instead of trigger clicked. So let's just stop and rename that to trigger clicked. Ah, if I can get the selection. Selection there is terrible. There we go. Trigger clicked. Save that off. Let's try one more time. Now let it start up. And now when I pull the trigger, see every time I pull it, we're getting a new entry. Let's clear it out. Pull, 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 and so on. So it's working now. Now we've got it all set up, and we've got a simple little wrapper that takes a regular old C Sharp event and turns it into a Bolt event. Seems like it works. Seems pretty cool. Uh, I think we can even see it in the flow graph, right? If I select the correct controller, yep. So whenever I pull it, it's a pretty damn cool system. I, I really like this. I'm going to have to play with this some more in the future. But every time I pull it, you can see it activating and running through the flow. Like I said, I think this is pretty interesting. I plan on playing with this a bit more in the future. Maybe use it as something for visual state machines for enemies or other things. Definitely seems worth investigating and playing with. Um, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, let me know below. Just drop a comment and let me know, hey, you care about visual scripting stuff. Want to learn more? And I'll do some more videos on this in the future. And thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And have a great day.